Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food. And up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is. Black gold. Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up a truck and they moved to Beverly. Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbillies. myself last night. I dreamed about this great big buck deer. I didn't dream them pussy cats. I seen them. All right, Granny. Now, why don't you make some coffee and I'll finish getting dressed and I'll see you in the kitchen. you go in the kitchen and make that coffee good and strong and have a cup I'll join you directly doggone well there was cats in here I seen them plain as anything you get that coffee made and stop worrying about cats. I don't see no kittens. Ain't none in here. 
just a vision. <laughs> I didn't know that was a vision. I swear he had his claws in my leg. Good morning, Granny. Morning, Jethro. Where'd all the kittens come from, Granny? You seen them, too? Sure. Whole bunch of them? Yeah. Different colors? That's right. All playing together on the floor? Yep. <laughs> Excuse me, Granny. I gotta go get the milk. You do that, boy, and I'll put the kittens out. Yes, ma'am. They're cute little rascals, but you don't belong in the... <laughs> oh, no. Uh, Granny, did you get the coffee made? I started to, Jeff, but I figured I'd best put the kittens out first. Or kittens, huh? <laughs> you see them, don't you? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course I do. Please, put them out for me, Jed, whilst I make the coffee. Oh, I don't think they're going to bother us. Please, Jed, put them out for me. Okay. Cute little things, ain't they? You're nothing cuter. I'll be sure you get them all. I will. Now you hurry with the coffee. There. I think I got them all. I didn't leave any, did I? Did you get the cute little striped one? Yep, got him right here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's got sharp claws. He was hanging on my leg. Uh-huh. <laughs> all right, here they go. <laughs> Yeah. Morning, Kelly. What you doing, Paul? Oh, I'm putting out the kittens. We had a house full of cats this morning. Gee, I'm sorry about that, but I just had to fetch them inside last night. Huh? What was that? You brought cats into the house. Now, Granny, please don't get mad. Mad? I'm gonna kiss you. <laughs> I thought my load had shifted. Well, I put them out again just now. Well, uh, tell me, why did you bring them in last night? So's they wouldn't get stole. Stole? Yes, sir. The fellow on the radio last night said the Beverly Hills folks is being robbed by a cat burglar. My <laughs> doggies, I can almost understand a starving man turning chicken feet. But why in tarnation would anybody want to steal cats? Maybe he's got a powerful lot of mice. <laughs> well, all he'd have to do is knock at the door and ask, and we'd give him all the cats he could carry. There's no figure in city folk. <laughs> hey, everybody. The milkman says to be on the lookout for the cat burglar. Yeah, we were just talking about him. Boy, I sure hope he comes here. Them cats they always chase me clean around the house trying to get to this milk. He hadn't better come here. Well, we could sure spare a few. Now, youngins, there's a right way and a wrong way of getting things, and I don't hold with thieving. Well, I'm gonna set a trap for that rascal just in case. Reckon he'll show up here, Uncle Jed? <laughs> well, with our bait, I'd say there's a real good chance. <laughs> Good morning, Miss Hathaway. Oh, good morning, Chief. I presume you've heard about the cat burglar. Yes, it's terrible. I understand he's still at large. That's right. He's gotten away so far with more than a quarter of a million dollars. A quarter of a million? I wonder where he banks. <laughs> <laughs> but, Chief, surely you wouldn't Oh, I was a... joking. This man's a real menace. He's got to be stopped. Well, he's extremely clever. He seems to ferret out the richest homes in the richest neighborhoods. I know what you're thinking, and have no fear. I, personally, am going to spend the next few nights at the Clampets. Well, that's very brave of you, Chief, but it seems to me the Clampets are well protected. They, they have dogs, they have guns, they're alert and utterly fearless. I know. That's why I'm staying with them. <laughs> <laughs> well, but surely you're not going to leave your wife alone and unprotected. Of course not. She's in Boston. If my wife were home, I wouldn't think of leaving the house. That woman could scare away any burglar. <laughs> Chief. 
Have you ever seen her in curlers with cold cream all over her face? <laughs> but if you're going to stay at the Clampets, who is going to guard your house at night? I'm glad you asked. Now, try and get a little nap during your lunch hour. <laughs> oh, oh, no, I'm not paid for any such hazardous duties. Relax, I'm not asking you to do anything hazardous. Just be a guest in my beautiful house for a few nights. You know, keep a few lights going. Well, uh, will, will there be any extra money involved? Don't be silly. You can stay there for nothing. <laughs> You're all hard, Chief. But if you want my advice, you'll hire someone to guard both places. Why? You just said the Clampers were well protected. So they are. But to any burglar, it's got to look like an ideal setup. They go to bed early, they turn out all the lights, and they are known to have $50 million. Bernie, it's a perfect setup. They go to bed early, they turn out all the lights, and they got $50 million. I don't like it. It looks too easy. Well, that's why I'm here, to double check everything. Pick me up in a half hour. Mike, listen, you're too hot. Everybody's talking about the cat burglar. <laughs> Blow town while you're still ahead. Bernie, $50 million. I'll get it, Uncle Jed. Howdy. Hello, Mr. Clampett. Uh, no, sir. My name's Jethro Bodine. Oh, well, I'm Mike Wilcox, uh, Sterling Detective Agency. <laughs> You're a detective? That's right. <laughs> so am I. Really? Well, pretty near the same. I'm a double knot spy. <laughs> oh. Well, say, this is a real honor, Jethro. Thank you. You want a big case? Just routine. I've been hired to protect the neighborhood against the uh, cat burglar. Hey, yeah, we heard about him. Can I help you? Gee, that's terrific, Jethro, but uh, this is pretty tame stuff for a double knot spy. Well, that's okay. I ain't been too busy lately. I haven't had many calls for double knot spy in here in Beverly Hills. <laughs> okay, we'll work together. Hot dog! You can start off by showing me around the place. You don't have to worry about the cat burglar coming around here. We's ready for him. You are? Heck yeah! My cousin Ella May set traps all over the place, inside and out. How about showing them to me? Uh, might give me a few ideas. Okay. Let's see. I, I gotta remember where they are. I think the first one's in the kitchen. Follow me. <laughs> I, I was wrong. This here is the first one. Jethro! Get out of my snare! I didn't get in here on purpose, you dumb old girl. Oh, Mr. Wilcox, uh, this here's my cousin Ellen. And uh, this here's my granny. Howdy. How do you do? Howdy, young fella. How do you do? What in tarnation is going on? Oh, Mr. Wilcox, this here's my Uncle Jet. How do you do? Pleased to meet you. Uh, Mr. Wilcox, here's a detective looking for the cat burglar. I was showing him some of Ellie's traps. Can you just point to him? <laughs> well, I'll show you the rest of it. Hey, wait a minute, Ellie. Get me down out of this thing. Okay, Jethro. Just a second. <laughs> Granny, you got something for a headache? I think so. Good looking young fella, any Granny? Downright handsome, what he is. Never mind the compliments, just give me something for my headache. Mr. Rowe, did you say Mr. Wilcox is a detective? Yeah, I'm supposed to be helping him. Let Ellie May help him for a while. He don't want no dumb old girl around. He needs somebody with brains. <laughs> Banging yours on the floor, you ain't gonna be much help to nobody. <laughs> so when I heard about this cat burglar on the radio, I figured he'd be coming here because we got so many. So many what? Cats. <laughs> you think the cat burglar? We think he's lowering a snake's belly in a wagon rut. <laughs> like Granny said, if he wants a cat, let him knock at the door and ask. I see that the whole family. Th oh yeah. Paul says stealing cats is pretty near worse than being a chicken thief. I agree. You like cats, huh? I love them. That's why I asked for this assignment. I'm going to make sure that the cat burglar gets everything that's coming to him. Good for you. When he comes here, he's good as caught, because I got traps all over the place. Just a minute, Ellie Mae. What are you doing? Well, I'm fixing to show Mr. Wilcox another trap. I'll do that. 
I'm the one that's working with him on this case. Now, where is it? Out yonder in the grass, where that saucers are sitting. You see, it'll have milk in it, and cats will be drinking out I'll of it. I'll show you, Mr. Wilcox. <laughs> be careful, Jethro. Don't worry. A double knot never gets caught twice. If there's a snare hidden in this grass, I'll for... Aha! I found it! <laughs> that is a beauty. You ain't seen nothing yet. Come on. <laughs> well, that's how it works, Mr. Wilcox. Okay, Ellie, you can let me out now. Ellie May? Mr. Wilcox! Uncle Jim! <laughs> I believe this is the only room you ain't had to look at. And I don't see none of Ellie's traps in here. Well, she's pretty good at hiding them. Do you mind if I have a closer look? No, no, just help yourself. We might be beholden to you for trying to catch that cat burglar. Well, to me, Mr. Clampett, any man that would steal cats is, well, he's lower than a snake's belly in a wagon rut. My <laughs> doggy young fellow, we sure see eye to eye on that. <laughs> oh, would you excuse Granny and me for just a minute? Certainly. into a dress. He's gonna get away if she don't get stirred. I'll stall him. You stir her. <laughs> so you found that, did you? Oh, uh, I was just happening to move this. That's how I happened onto it. But you're wasting your time. I've been four years trying to get this radio to work. <laughs> radio? I have stood here for hours. Twisting this little dial. Can't even get static. <laughs> no wonder they covered it up with this picture. <laughs> One of these days, I gotta have this fixed. <laughs> oh, Granny, by the way, there is something I ought to warn you about. What's that? Well, sometimes these cat burglars take other things. Really? Mm. You reckon they'd take a possum or two, or maybe a raccoon? Well, no, what I meant is that sometimes they take valuables, uh, jewelry, uh, even money. Land sakes. I got all the family jewelry up in my room. Lots of money, too. Uh, in a good, safe place, I hope. Oh, yeah. I reckon even a cat burglar wouldn't want to go poking through a woman's nightgown drawer. <laughs> I'm sure you're right. Well, I've got to be going. Uh... Now, now, wait a minute. Ellie May! Really? I can't find that girl no place. She ain't in her room. Well, Mr. Wilcox is going to get away. I mean, he's got to leave. You called me, Granny? Yeah. Where you been? Setting more traps. You want to see them? Well, uh, I, I got to report back to headquarters. Well, uh, maybe Mr. Wilcox can come back here and take supper with us tonight. Yeah. Oh, I wish I could, but uh, I'm going to be pretty busy guarding the neighborhood against the cat burglar. Well, if he comes here, he's as good as caught. I got a Danny new trap out front. Well, if we should catch him, uh, where do we get a hold to you? Like you to have the credit? Oh. <laughs> well, uh, I'll. Uh... Yeah! We got him! Jethro, stop springing my trap! Well, you didn't tell me it was here. Come on, Granny. If you hold me, I think I can cut him down from the upstairs window. But this is a real beauty. Congratulations, Ellie. Thank you. Well, I'll see you around, Jethro. My ride's coming. Hey, wait a minute. You're going to take me with you, ain't you? Not this time. But you said you needed somebody smart. Yeah, I know. Well, here I am. Where else are you going to find a fellow with my kind of brain? I don't know. I'll see you around. Bye, Ellie. Bye. Get going. This job is going to be a piece of cake with nuts. <laughs> Mr. Drysdale, do you need the loan of a nightshirt? Well, thank you, Granny, but I brought some things. I sure is neighborly of you. Well, you know how it is. With this cat burglar on the prowl, I just feel it's safer here. You know, with me around to help protect the place. Oh, we're being pretty well protected. Ellie's got traps set, and Jethro's out keeping watch. And he's Mr. Wilcox. Well, who's he? That young, good-looking detective. 
Oh, Miss Hathaway must have hired him. Well, that does it. Time to turn in. Yeah, come on. Well, it's, it, it, it's 7 o'clock. Yeah, yeah, way past our bedtime, too. But <laughs> I'm sure it sneaks up on you when you're playing checkers. Well, if you don't mind, I'd like to stay up a little longer. It's been dark better than an hour. Well, maybe he's a mite upset on account of the cat burglar. You can stay up as long as you like, Mr. Drysdale. Eight, nine o'clock if you want. <laughs> Good night. See you in the morning. <laughs> Mr. Private, Granny, wait for me. <laughs> Quiet, let's move in. Mike, it's too early. They're asleep, believe me. Just follow the plan. Okay. Jed, hurry up. Come on. What is it, Granny? I hear the noise. It's probably the cat burglar. More than likely a cat. Just found this one in my bed. <laughs> I don't know how many more Ellie's got staged around. This noise came from downstairs. And it was no pussycat, neither. I don't hear nothing. What y'all doing? Granny thinks she heard a burglar downstairs. Want me to go down and grab him? <laughs> no, you get back in bed. Well, I can't. Why not? Well, it's full of cats. <laughs> Into my bed. Jed and me's going downstairs and look around. Ain't we, Jed? Sooner or later. Might as well be now. <laughs> look at a lander. That detective. He's still trying to get something on that busted radio. <laughs> But he ought to be out looking for the cat burglar. He's liable to lose his job. Ow! Oh! I got you. Now let's go. Ow, oh, ow, oh, let go. Oh, Granny, I caught the cat burglar. Hold on, young fella. <laughs> Ellie just caught the cat burglar for you. Forget about that busted radio. You sweet boy. <laughs> I called him dead to rights, Granny. He was opening up your nightgown drawer. He was? Yeah. Hilda had her kittens in there again. Ain't there no place you varmints won't go for cats? Cats? Take him in tow, Mr. Detective. Uh, you bet I will. You're coming to headquarters, cat burglar. <laughs> Did I hear somebody say the cat burglar was caught? Yep. Ellie nabbed him, and this fine young detective is taking him in. Well, by George, I had a feeling it's right here. That's why I insisted on spending the night. Hey, you buddy, I caught the cat burglar! Mr. Drysdale, I found him skulking around in your backyard, so I threw a blanket over him, and here he is. But, Jethro, I caught the cat burglar. Well, then, who's this? Miss T. <laughs> you let Jethro carry you all the way to my house. Why don't you say something? Chief, you foolish man. <laughs> Put her down, Jethro. What were you doing prowling around my yard anyway? You hired a detective. No, I didn't. And who are these? They got away. <laughs> sure thing, huh? Pushover, huh? Piece of cake, huh? Oh, shut up and quit rocking the net. <laughs> Well, now 
now it's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heapin' helpin' of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here. This has been a Filmways presentation. Thank <music> you.